r slash credit. Babysitters of Reddit. What's your demon child story? I used to babysit the two boys of family while their parents went out once every few weeks to get some alone time. I had looked after them before and they were usually well behaved and listened very well. This family had a few cats and they would climb in all sorts of odd places such as in the sinks, bookshelves, cupboards etc. Well this night I guess they had left the dry door open and when one of the kids went downstairs to get his ball hockey gear I guess he closed the door on the cat and started the dryer. I was already outside waiting at this point so I heard nothing about this until we came back inside and I noticed the dryer was on. I asked the kids why it was on and they said their mom was doing laundry. I knew for a fact that it was off when after the parents left so when I went to investigate I opened it to a completely burned and mangled cat that was essentially twisted like a pretzel. I told the parents what happened and that their kid was a psychopath and needs help now because he clearly is not right in the head. Never babysit anyone's kids ever again. The parents were in shock. They didn't blame me or get mad. Just shocked that one of their kids murdered their cat like that. It still makes me uncomfortable to think about him. I babysit all through junior high and high school to make my spending money. The worst was a referral for the friends of a family I babysit for all the time. There were two twin boys who were 8 and a little girl who was just starting her toilet training. The kids were very nice during the introductions. But it soon turned out they were hyper as hell as soon as their parents left. The boys whooped and hollered and chased each other through the house. I convinced them to play a legus or whatever in their room to quiet them down because I had to deal with the little girl who needed to potty. She kept trying to poop in her little training potty, but it wasn't happening. Then I heard the boys screaming at the top of their lungs, so I left the girl on her potty to find out why the boys were freaking out. The boys' bedroom had two single beds. Each boy was standing on his bed pissing at the other one, like they were having a pee pee duel. They got urine everywhere, on the walls, the carpet, the sheets and all over each other. I'm ticked at these kids and tell them to change their clothes and strip the sheets. They just keep laughing at me and make me chase them around the house like it is a funny game to be soaked in pee. Meanwhile the little girl, who is not wearing any pants or undies, drags her potty into the kitchen singing at the top of her lungs about how she pooped and wants me to look. When one of the boys runs through the kitchen, he accidentally overturns the potty and stuff gets all over the linear Liam. As much as I wanted to cry from utter frustration I managed to hold my temper and calm them all down enough while I cleaned up as best I could. Tough when it isn't your house and I had no idea where they kept all their cleaning supplies. When the parents finally came home they didn't offer any apologies for how their kids behaved or any extra tip or anything like that. Needless to say, that was the first and last time I ever babysit for that family. Eta, this was way back, before everyone had cell phones, so calling the parents to come home immediately wasn't really a good option. It would have involved calling a movie theater or whatever to track them down when I didn't even know what film they were seeing or even know if they had finished eating dinner out yet. Unless the kids were dying I would not call the parents. I'm rather proud of my 14 year old self for being a trooper and sticking it out rather than giving up. Plus it is just pee and poop. I'd change diapers and cleaned up after pets before. I'm a full time nanny and have been for the past 5 years but in Childka for the past 12. I'm primarily a nanny of multiples ranging from twins to quadruplets. Now, with that being said, you'd think I had run across a handful of demon children which I have, but dear lord, it's the parents that are the demons on more than one occasion. The one in particular that comes to mind. I started with a morning family that I found through carepoint.com after my regular family shortened my hours to afternoons only. When I first interviewed, the mom was notably odd, very in touch with emotions, and very particular about food. She stated that she wanted me from 7 o'clock-12, Monday through Friday for her 5-year-old son and her 3-year-old son, while she either an errands or worked from the home. Not too weird so far, but then she asked me what my parenting style was. 
I told her that my style was whatever hers was. I'm perfectly fine altering my nannying style to fit each individual family's needs. She told me she was wanting the answer of what I was going to do when I was a parent, not in nannying. I told her my philosophy, be kind, be consistent, timeouts for bad behavior, etc. She then told me hers, we don't tell our children no we don't take their toys away we don't do timeouts we don't spank, okay, I agree. So, to say the least, I was confused about how the hell they run their household. Pretty much, she believed that each child had this emotional backpack where they store their feelings and they need to express them constantly. She also mentioned to me that both of her children sleep in her bed. All well and good, but here's how her children acted with it once I was hired. I asked the 3 year old, still in diapers, to lay down so I could change him. He refused, so I gave him a warning that I was going to pick him up and lay him down to change him. He then ran off to his mother screaming and crying. I told her why he was crying and this is what she said. Did Brittany do something to upset you? You just go ahead and cry. I'll hold you. Then once he was done with his tantrum, she said I'm so proud of you for getting all those big feelings out. No. Your child threw a tantrum because he didn't want his bud changed. He doesn't need praise for that. The 5 year old was very independent, very smart, and very OCD. At one point, his brother and I were coloring. Now, as normal 3 year olds do, he was scribbling. His brother came in and started taunting his brother and telling him he was doing everything wrong. I told the older brother, your brother is trying to express his creativity. Let's encourage him, rather than criticize him the 5 year old bursts into tears and runs to his mother, and he has the biggest wail about this, to which the mother responds the same as above. The 5 year old was mad at his mother, because she told him to get dressed. He came up, hit her across the face while screaming. She just let him. She kept praising him for getting his big feelings out. He's still hitting her, so he takes him to the shower, turns the water on both of them, fully clothed, and tries to get him to calm down. So, besides those incidents, I can't get either child to do anything, especially with the mother around. After a few weeks, she introduced me to more rules and more expectations. She wanted me to have a schedule with them and wanted me to do some homeschooling. No big deal. Got it. But then, any time I told them it was time for blah blah blah, she'd swoop in and say that they could just play instead. Like, the children just woke up that morning and I told them to brush their teeth. They said they wanted to play and the mom negotiated with them by asking them if that's what they thought they felt they needed to do. Like, no matter what I or the mother said it was time to do, as long as the kid felt like he didn't need to do said thing, then he didn't need to do so. At one point, even, the mom and I took the kids to the library. I told her we needed to finish up soon, because I needed to get going to my other job soon. We got to the car, and because the 5 year old didn't feel like getting in the car, she let him stand outside for 25 minutes before he felt like getting in the car, resulting in me being late for my next job. She also was really strange with food too. She was one of those people who legitimately treated organic food as a religion, her words. She had a number system for food 1 to 5. The only things that were listed as hash 1, as in completely healthy, was a vitamin called chew and prash. Even fruits and vegetables were labeled as a hash 2. Salads and healthy food. Hash 3. Bread. Hash 4. And anything sweet hash 5. The thing is, she classified anything above a hash 2 to be unhealthy, so these children thought a simple salad, or anything normal, was bad for them, so they wouldn't eat it. And any time they did have any sweets, they'd go fucking nuts over wanting more, because she deprived them of everything. They'd have full day tantrums because of it. The last note is that she didn't allow any electronics in the bedroom. Not even an alarm clock. So this meant that I had to wait every single day in the cold, ringing the doorbell constantly, sometimes up to 45 minutes, for them to come answer the door. Needless to say, I quit within two months. It was utterly ridiculous. At the end of it, she asked me to review her family and children. 
she asked me the pros and cons. She was very shocked to hear that the only pro I listed was that they children had a very good vocabulary. I babysit for a few families on my street as a preteen slash teen. Word of mouth spread and a family maybe six streets away asked me to watch three kids three kids seemed like a lot for not knowing them, but they said they'd only be gone a few hours. Parents leave. Kids turn into demon spawn two little boys and one youngest child girl. They tormented her until she was literally hiding slash clinging to my legs and clothes. I turned on a movie and they were okay for a minute. Then one boy gets up and pulls his pants down and literally just starts pissing in the middle of the living room. He's totally potty trained, like six. I freak out and start to clean it up and send the boy to his room. The other brother followed him as they shared a room and just sat there with him. The girl sneaks downstairs throughout all this and unbeknownst to me starts making an F5 grade mess. After I clean the pee, I go to get them out of the boy's room. Surprise, door is closed. Oh, and apparently locked, the one boy is only like 3 and is crying because he can't open it and his brother won't let him out. The older boy is defiant and just screaming at me no I'm not opening it. You're not my mom. I want my mommy. We had a standoff for a few minutes before I realized the girl was gone. Well, I wasn't getting the boys out, so I went to get the phone and call the parents while I tried to find the girl. She pulled out all the fucking toys and they were everywhere and I couldn't find her because she was like in a pillow pile somewhere. I don't really have an ending to the story, but needless to say I was pretty much in tears by the time they came home. One of them drove me home and kept apologizing and hoped I'd still give them another chance. That did not happen. Edit, haha this almost does sound like the other story. Maybe that's why I'm scared to have little boys. Also, this was probably 15 plus years ago. I was maybe 14. I didn't have the mental capacity to know what to do or how to handle any of this. And yeah, I was paid probably 5, 7 dollar sign an hour. It was awful and scarred me from babysitting for a while. When I was in high school I had just started getting into babysitting and even then, because I was pretty busy most weeks, it wasn't much. Anyway, there was one family that would ask me to babysit their two boys every couple of weeks or so. Not for long, usually a couple of hours. They were both great kids, ages 4 and 6. I always got along great with the parents, so I had no reason to expect what happened the last time I ever babysit for them. I arrived at their place at 4.30pm on a Saturday and everything was normal. Right before they were about to walk out the door, the mom says, Oh. Oh my gosh, how awful of me. I forgot to tell you that the people we are going out with need a sitter for their kids, and we told them to just bring them over. We'll pay you more, of course. I asked how many kids they were bringing, and she told me four. Four kids aged between 14 months and 8 years old. It was only supposed to be 2 to 3 hours and the mom swore up and down that these were very quiet sweet kids and it wouldn't seem as though I was watching 6 kids in total. I agreed as she seemed genuinely distraught that she'd forgotten to tell me all of this. And, as I said before, I had no reason not to trust her. So the other family brings their kids over and drops them off. All 6 of them. So, I now have 8 kids to watch, and right off the bat, one kid sets out to make my life hell. Very very long story short, the adults were gone until 1am. They paid me $34 for the entire night. They didn't answer my calls when I called about one of the kids who ate a banana who then told me that he was severely allergic to bananas. He wasn't. He was fine. But I panicked trying to get a hold of his parents for quite some time. All of the kids went along with it until the sweetest child there, a little girl who was about 6, told me that her brother was lying. The adults told me they were going to one local restaurant, Marketplace Grill, but they didn't. Because I called it looking for them, and there was only one location in our city at that time. They confirmed when they got home that they'd actually gone somewhere else. I'd called both couple cells probably 3x each, neither answered or called back or replied to my messages. 
I genuinely thought the kid might have a horrible allergic reaction and was preparing to have to call 9 double one. The oldest kid wrangled all the other kids to be horrible all night to each other, to me, to the poor kid he named Mr. McFluffs. He had one child poop on the living room rug while I was distracted by another child screaming and hitting his twin brother. Another kid vomited and the oldest, demon child, kid scooped it up and threw it on the walls. When I finally sat the oldest kid down and told him he was in time out for the vomit incident, he picked up a ceramic figurine from the coffee table and tried to throw it at my head. I grabbed his arm halfway through his throwing motion and saved the stupid figurine. Then he broke down, sobbing, and said his dad hit him at night when his mom went to bed and he showed me a bruises on his ribs. I immediately got very very concerned and he then broke out in hysterical laughter saying, I just wanted to see the look on your stupid face. Nightmare. Night. I wasn't really upset with the original family I was babysitting for because it certainly wasn't their fault that the other family's kids were hellions. But when she told me she purposefully didn't answer my calls because she knew I was calling about how bad things were and then gave me $34? Yeah. Nope. No hope. Never again. The other family didn't pay me a single dime. It was a nightmare night. Not technically a babysitter, but for a few months I had to babysit my husband's nieces and nephews. These kids are awful. Their parents neglect them and it shows. Here are a few highlights. I rescued a two week old kitten. Nursed him back to health and adopted him. One day while I was doing dishes, the two youngest kids took him outside and tried to drown him in the above ground pool. Twice. He survived. My in-law's house was filthy and roach infested. While one of the kids was eating dinner, a roach apparently crawled across his plate. He started hysterically crying. I go to calm him down. And one of the others runs into the kitchen, opens every spice she can get get hand on and dumps them all over the kitchen. I decide I have to keep the two smaller ones with me at all times due to their antics. I put them on the kitchen counter to help me cook. They actually start behaving, and I thought I had found a successful method in handling them. I was wrong. One asks me a question, while the other takes out glasses from the cupboard and starts smashing them on the ground. I go to stop her when the other little one starts smashing plates. The two oldest were sisters and they hated each other. They get into a fight over the TV. Could have been over this box, I can't quite remember. The older sister starts chasing after the younger sister. She eventually smashes the younger sister's fingers in the bathroom door. While the younger sister is crying, the older sister is laughing maniacally. That's just a few. There are several other stories that make me so grateful to have moved far away from the mall. Late to thread but. I babysit to kids throughout the school year and multiple days in the summer when I was in high school. I was pretty much a 9 to 5 nanny when not in school. I really loved those kids, which is surprising, considering the first time I babysit them all day it all went to hell. The older sibling was a boy in my cousin's grade, the younger a little girl. They were maybe 6 sevenths and 3 quarters at this point. I had babysit once or twice before, but never a whole day. I don't know what started it, but the kids began to fight. Before I could break it up, the little girl threw a heavy, pointy, metal toy plane at her brother. It hit him right in the corner of his eye barely missing his actual eyeball. He starts gushing blood everywhere. All over his clothes, all over the expensive Disney store Winnie the Pooh blanket his sister had been walking around with, all over the pristine white carpet. He freaks out and starts crying, asking me if he is dying. Hardcore, terrified kid sobs. I rush into action and usher him into the bathroom and get a cold washcloth. I had to coax his hands away from his face so I could see what I was dealing with, and eventually I get the blood wiped away and see it's a very small cut. I have him hold the cold washcloth to his eye, and I work on calming him down. The bleeding stops. I get him into fresh PJs and send him to his bed to lie down for a few minutes since he wore himself out. That's when I realize that I haven't seen his sister in about 10 to 15 minutes. I got sidetracked with the bleeding, panicking kid and now I have no idea where the culprit is. 
I run around the house and check all the doors and locks. Still locked. So, I know she is at least inside. I'm fighting back tears and running around the house shouting her name trying to find her. I go back to her brother's room deciding that I need to get his help. And that's when I hear it. Little sniffles and quiet hiccups from behind his bedroom door. She was a small child and had hidden behind the door fearing that she was in trouble and that I was going to spank her. I didn't. So, now I'm comforting her, but also telling her that hurting her brother and hiding from me isn't okay. I'm completely drained and wigged out at this point, so I have the kids go to the living room with me and sit them at opposite ends of the couch. I put on a kid's film and get to work cleaning up the blood from the carpet and floor. Then, I sit at the kitchen table, open concept, I can see them and quietly try to calm myself down so I don't puke all over myself. I'm really proud I got the blood stains out of the carpet though. Not a babysitter story, per se, but I imagine there are some terrifying stories about this kid, and the aftermath plays itself out well. My parents had some dear friends from church that had a couple of kids, both quite a bit younger than me. Family get-togethers were brutal, especially when we had to venture to their house. The kids were Winnie and bratty beyond all belief. It was basically one constant breakdown until one of the parents tried to usher the kids off to bed in their honorses. Anyway, at one of these ill-fated dinner parties, I was off trying to kill some time. God only knows what we did before smartphones. The elder child was playing with some thick wooden blocks. He didn't really have the gift of the gab, but he started sounding rather agitated. I turned to look at him and was greeted with a very close look at one of his wooden blocks as it cracked me right in the eye socket. As a 10 or 11 year old, I wasn't about to betray my veneer of toughness, so I took it like a man. The kid, however, started screaming his lungs out like I'd hit him with the block. His mom came rushing in, fully prepared to admonish me for some perceived misdeed until she saw the enormous goose egg growing above my eye. She asked me what happened, and I tried to spell it out as nicely as possible. Her solution? The good night ritual of stories, songs and soft cooing, but not before throwing out those evil wooden blocks that almost certainly drove her darling son to such madness. Fast forward 8 years, making him about 15 to 16. The block thrower is in and out of juvie, insanely addicted to heroin and constantly stealing from his family to feed his addiction. Parents. Show a little tough love to your kids. Babysit for a family with three boys, when I was about 16, had no problems with the older two, but once when it was time for bed, the six year old decided to start playing the drum set in their basement. I tried to convince him to put the drumsticks away and come upstairs. Cue him proceeding to hit me as hard as he could all over my arms as I tried to defend myself. You wouldn't think something a bit bigger than a pencil would hurt, but god was it painful. I was crying and convinced he'd broken at least a couple of my fingers when I managed to get one drumstick away, which led him to grab his iPod charging to call his dad, who was away for business, and tell him his babysitter was being mean. Eventually had to call his mother to yell at him through the phone because I was half a second away from calling the police on this kid or just walking home a few doors down. Don't think he ever fell asleep before his mom got back and didn't even get paid extra to make up for my inability to write for the next couple weeks. I was babysitting three little nightmares, one of the would tear apart her dolls then Frankenstein them Sid style, but add a touch of red paint along the glue lines but that's a different story. Before the mom left me with her three demon spawn children she told me the kids were allowed all the ice cream and candy and sugar they wanted, but that they should go to bed around 9 colon 30 ish. Hearing this as soon as the mom left they went to town on the pantry. For the next 4 hours they would not calm down. They were breaking shit, they locked their kitten in one of the cabinets, and I spent half an hour getting the poor thing out. They had a dead cat in the freezer and pulled it out to show it to me. Around 10 o'clock the youngest has passed out and I carried him to his bed and tucked him in. One down two to go. Half an hour later the middle child has settled down in her room with her iPad just playing Minecraft. Two down one to go. The older sister is in the living room making one of her Barbie hell spawn. 
This one had 8 extra long limbs and no face. I really didn't want to confront this child because she was kinda scary. When I do convince her to go to bed she goes into the room she shares with her sister and yells to her sister, who was about 7, about how there was a monster in the house and that it was going to kill us all. Like her sister flipping out and jumping through the open window and running to the road at around 10.45 at night I freak out and jump out the window and run after her. I catch up to her just as a car is passing and all they see is me grabbing a little girl and dragging her into the forest. So yeah, that was the last time I ever babysit for them. Edit, I should probably add they had the dead cat in their freezer because someone shot it with an arrow and the police needed it for the investigation. So I read the title and assumed you meant creepy children. But we can start with something pretty normal. I have been babysitting for almost 10 years. Newish client asked for some specific dates so she could complete her class. Only 2 hours, 3 kids, one was under a year, had colic. Easy. Well well well. The mom and dad must have a shitty relationship because the eldest child lost a game and proceeded to guilt his younger brother by not only calling him names but insulting his intelligence and saying he was worthless. He wasn't even 6 years old. His huge brother was 4 and responded by crying, agreeing and coming to the conclusion that he shouldn't have won because he wasn't smart enough. Yeah. Arsehole child. I told him to go to his room, after he refused to apologize for being mean, I walked him upstairs and told him it was only 5 minutes. He screamed, kicked the door, threw things at the door, and then scratched me and told me I was stupid when I tried to sit him down and explain that he did something wrong. Let's just say I didn't go back. Then there are parents who just should not have had children. I was doing a test run a few hours in the afternoon with a mother who only had one child. During that time, I witnessed a spank, grab, drag, yell in the face and toss around a two year old. She screamed at him because he was cranky while she was on the phone. He also didn't share because since he was a boss child the other kids would be scolded if they didn't share with him. And then I watch a six year old. She has some sort of multiple personality disorder, but I didn't know that the first time I watched her. She speaks to herself and me in this person. And she speaks of herself in third person and always negatively. She also has anxiety and asks me about super creepy subjects. For instance today, she asked my what would happen if someone just stopped eating. I told her they would probably die and she looked wistful. She has also spoken to corners. But she likes me, and her mom pays me well, so I keep coming back. <laughs> Repost, and not really a demon story so much as just an unfortunate event. I'm 14 years old and my mom's friend calls with an emergency. Her normal babysitter backed out on her last minute, so she asked if I could sit her autistic 8 year old son for a few hours. Sure I say, why not. So I get to the house and the kid wants to watch some cartoons. So we watch cartoons. Then he gets bored and wants to play hide and go seek. I tell him to go hide and I'll come look for him soon. I continue to watch cartoons for 10 more minutes before I realize I should probably be looking for him now I was on the bottom level and they had one of those split level houses where you walk in the front door and you can either go upstairs or downstairs. So I start walking up the stairs yelling Gregory, where are you? You know, the usual. So I get to the foil landing in the middle, and this kid slides out from the hallway to the top of the stairs. Tom Cruise risky business style, except he is, but ass naked, and he screams you scared my pants off. Now this kid is fairly large, weight and height wise. This was also the first penis I had ever seen. I was immediately scarred for life, called my mom explained the situation and that i was not fit to babysit anymore she came and took over and i walked home and sat in silence for a while i also have never babysit since then i babysit for the neighbor kid quintessential spoiled only child i was in my early teens and he was about seven when this happened i normally babysit during the week in summer while when school was out and his parents were at work 
but occasionally they'd ask me to babysit for an evening out. This was one of those evenings. His parents were out with the mom's sister and brother-in-law, so I was taking care of the kid and his 5-year-old cousin. They were pretty bratty, but nothing I couldn't handle. Until they decided that they had enough of me being in charge and got out their pocket knives. Yes, their dads had gone out and bought pocket knives for them at ages 5 and 7 and decided it was cool for them to have them with no parental supervision. So the boys got out their pocket knives and started chasing me around the house with them. I wasn't brave enough to try to disarm them, but I was smart enough to know these kids weren't able to understand the damage they could do, so I ran. They chased me out of the house and proceeded to lock all the doors. This was long before 13 year olds had cell phones, but luckily I was just at the neighbors, so I ran home. My dad is not a nice dude to begin with, but when I told him what was happening, he was livid. He went back with me and yelled for the boys to open the door. They unlocked it and then hid in the kids bedroom. My dad ordered them into the living room, so they hid under a blanket on the couch. He demanded their knives, so they handed them out from under the blanket. My dad went home, and I sat there while those two shitheads hid under their blanket until their parents came home. Now here's the kicker. When the parents pulled in, my dad came back over, told the parents what happened and handed them the knives. And the parents gave the knives back to the boys. In front of us. Somehow I still ended up babysitting for those jerks after that. Anyway, years later it came out there was some seriously fucked up shit happening to that kid, so no wonder he had some behavioral issues. Sad really, 